Did you hear this? That is the sound of more interesting and engaging edits. Let me show you how to create it. I'll start by showing you how to easily create reverb tail like this one. Let's first listen to how the audio track sounds without any effects. Let's zoom in on the timeline and cut the music before the last hit. Then, duplicate the trimmed fragment and place it inside a compound clip. Inside the compound clip, set the playhead where the audio file ends and add a gap using the shortcut Alt-W. Go back to the main timeline and extend the edited compound clip. In the effects menu, under the audio tab, search for the effect Cathedral 2 and drag it onto our compound clip. Then search for channel EQ and do the same. In the inspector, click the show the advanced equalizer UI icon. An equalizer is a tool that lets us change the volume of different parts of a sound. The right side represents high tones, like squeaks, cymbals, or birds chirping. The middle is the mid frequencies, where you'll find, for example, the human voice and most instruments. The left side is the low tones, the bass, like the rumble of a drum. By adjusting the equalizer, we can move a frequency slider up or down to make that part of the sound louder or quieter. Use the low pass filter to reduce the high frequencies so that our reverb isn't too bright. As you can hear, thanks to the simple trick, the ending of the music sounds much better. Let's move on to the next part. You will see how sound editing can influence the dynamics of the edit. After a dynamic beginning, I want to slow down the middle section. However, as you can see, long, slowed down shots are not enough. Let's cut the music where we want our edit to feel calmer. Then, apply a fade in so that the volume of this section gradually increases from zero. It doesn't sound good yet. Let's add an equalizer animation so the sound gradually shifts from muffled to more audible. To achieve this, we'll again use the channel EQ effect and animate the high cut frequency parameter. Notice how much of the audible frequencies we've cut. This creates the effect of the sound coming from behind a wall. I think it's much better, but that's not all. Let's now add some sound effects. When it comes to sound designing, I highly recommend layering effects with different frequencies, which will give the effect a fuller sound. The drop itself is ready and turned out really good. Now I'll add some additional sound effects to increase the audience's engagement. I'll start by adding the sound of sand. I think I could emphasize the drop with an additional high-pitched tone, a kind of steady signal that further highlights the sudden slowdown. I tweak the audio file as needed, adjusting things like the audio length and volume. There's a slight pitch change at the end, so I'll cut that part out and use retiming to match the audio effect with the slow motion section of the edit. Now I'm going to take a duplicate of the whoosh effect I added earlier and turn it into a riser to build tension before the end of the composition. For that, I'll use the reverse clip option on the trimmed audio layer. I'm also going to add another layer with a different whoosh, remembering the rule of combining sound effects.
It's very important to note that sound effects don't have to match what's happening on the screen. I focus more on emphasizing the mood and atmosphere of the edit. For example, the sound of a ticking clock may seem completely unrelated to an edit showing tennis. However, it underlines a moment in the edit, the mood, the slowdown that ultimately leads to an acceleration of the action. The ticking of the clock subconsciously creates a sense of anticipation for a change in tempo. That's exactly why we use sound effects. Now I want to show you how you can use a simple white solid to create a stylish transition between shots. And if you add some audio effects on top, you will get a really engaging effect that grabs your audience's attention. Once you drop the solid generator onto the timeline, trim it to around 4 frames right where the shot changes. Then, in the inspector, change its color to white and set the blending mode to difference. After that, go to M extension, find the M adjustment layer and place it above the solid, making sure it's trimmed to the exact same length. Now I will desaturate everything below the M adjustment layer with the built-in color board. Then, from the effects tab, I'll drag in add noise and tweak the settings until it looks the way I prefer. Finally, we will add a glitchy sound effect over the transition to make it feel more dynamic. And that brings us to the end. These were some quick ways to use the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro to make edits more interesting. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, let me know in the comments.